Thank you, thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll talk briefly about what, what is homework. And according to Homework Improved Academic Achievement, they say that homework is any task assigned by school teachers intended for students to carry out during non-school hours. Okay, next slide, please. So, you know, that parents are important in helping with children with homework. Yes, no, maybe. They do say, and research says, that homework is an out-of-class study. It helps students get a deeper understanding of the subject. And they're able to turn that theoretical knowledge that they have into those practical skills that our students use all the time. So many students who receive too much of this homework maybe become overwhelmed. And that's when we step in. That's when we come in and we help and do that support as families. And some research do say that they believe that families should gradually reduce the amount of help that is given to students as they get older. But others believe that parental involvement cultivates that positive learning behavior. So what do you believe? Is it important to help children with homework? Yes, no, maybe. Think about it. And so your answer is, yes, it's important for parents to help with homework. It's an important responsibility that as parents, we are directly supporting that student learning. This allows success to happen at home and be involved in the children's education. And we know that with that parent support and that those home and self-confidence of motivation in the classroom. Parents also can have benefits with this involvement, participating, including the individual time that they are able to have with the students. They're able to highlight those strengths and those weaknesses, and they're able to make that learning a little bit more meaningful and having those high aspirations. Next slide, please. Okay, so what does it take to have a parent role when helping with homework? It is taking part in our children's education. It's ensuring that we engage in the learning and helping our children prepare for learning and setting that priority. And we're able to do that by doing these couple of things. We're able to advocate for the student learning. We're able to guide our children in preparing for learning. We're able to support those children to set priorities. We're able to monitor our children to improve that student performance and it helps with monitoring our children's absenteeism. Also, it helps children for higher grades and test scores as we communicate with our children how to improve those social skills. Now, if you attended and have attended from your school sessions with your POC, your family engagement contact at your campus, you will have been able to make these connections what we have been saying lately, to participate and be engaged in those five important parent roles. And we know that those roles help accelerate student learning. We know that by communicating those high expectations, by monitoring your child's performance, by supporting the learning at home, and by guiding your children's education, you're able to advocate for your child. So again, helping with the homework allows us to be able to play these roles. Next slide, please. Now, there are a couple of things that if we play these roles, we're able to do. And homework allows us to play these roles with a couple of reasons that are beneficial. We know that it helps to understand the material better. We're able to share our experiences and our knowledge, and we're able to find those alternative ways to explain that subject to our children. We know that it will help improve our student, our child-parent relationship, because we know that we're able to spend time together, and we're able to do children's homework, and it helps turning that quantity into quality time, which means that parent-child relationship will improve. Now, if we're able to do this, it helps us to stay organized and beat those procrastinations that a lot of us adults and children may be involved in as well. With the parent assistance, children will be able to manage their time and they will be able to work on assignments faster. They will be able to focus. So cultivating that positive learning behavior is a plus. It would help students follow an example of their parents and stick to that positive learning behavior. All of this is to help motivate our children for education, because that if students and children are motivated, they're interested in that learning process. And it's more likely that he or she will keep studying on on their own. They have learned something from you and that's those standards that we have at home. 
And then we're able to make those connections with learning. We're able to see exactly what is happening with learning at home. So again, showing that interest in your child's learning will help to prepare children with homework, which helps your child know that you value the learning and the education. Next slide, please. Now, just as we saw those things that stand out for parent involvement, there are a couple of things that we have to keep in mind as we help our children with homework. Sometimes we may add stress because of expectations. We have as parents those high expectations. We want our children to do really well. And sometimes those expect expectations can lead into stress or anxiety or even headaches. So we want to ensure that we understand what's happening. It can lead to misunderstanding between the parent and child of what exactly that homework time is, for example. Our children may think, oh, you know what? When I get home, I'm going to sit home, relax. I'm going to do homework in the evening. And as parents, we may think, no, we've got to continue to do this homework now so that we can have free time in the evening. It discourages independent learning and self-management. Sometimes as parents, we want to complete the whole assignments from beginning to end. And when we do that, it discourages, it discourages our students, our children from being responsible for their homework routine. And why is that? Because they know that if they have to be reminded of an assignment. They run out of time. Here you are trying to help them complete it. And then it discourages them the independence of learning and self-management. Also, when we step in, that may help in reducing their test scores because they're so accustomed to receiving our support at home with at-home activities, at-home assignments. Then when it's time to complete these assignments during the daytime in class, they may not be able to do so. So again, it results in lower test scores. Next slide, please. So let's think about some tips. What could help our children with homework? We wanna ensure that we find that right time for the homework, like we mentioned. You know, it's okay, after you get home, 15 minutes, let's take a break and it's time to continue. Ensuring that you're able to motivate your child, given that time limit, and ensuring that you have that really weekly homework time. So this is what we do when we come home. And then also being able to give that right space for homework. What does it look like? For the younger kids, you know, less distraction, being there present, being available. For the older kids, being able to acknowledge what's happening around their surroundings and working with what is happening from those distractions. We would develop a positive approach to homework. Okay, we know that homework sometimes is not easy. So we want to encourage our children to stay on task, to again, to keep focus, to try to do the easy assignments first and understanding the work that is being asked of them. So knowing and letting the teacher know, you know what, Ms. Yepes, my child is spending way too much time doing homework. We want to make sure that they can concentrate, that they can focus. And if they're struggling, partnering with the teacher and ensuring what can be done for their success. Next slide, please. So like anything we do, it takes good habits to get better at what we're doing, right? And so it does with homework. So there are good habits that we can help to support. Remember, allow time for a child to decompress when they get home, 15, 30 minutes. No, time, no um, screen time for children. You know how distracting that is. And we know, you know, I have children and I know once my child gets home, he gets on that phone, he begins to work with it. And how much time does it take for him to get off of it? So just having that routine, no, no uh, media, no social media, no screen time right as soon as they return home. Some children may like to listen to music. That helps them focus and concentrate. We wanna see if we're able to be together when we start these routines. And if we're not there, the caregiver, the older sister, the older brother, who can step in to ensure that this routine is happening. And always praising the efforts and not the results. All our children learn different ways. My son learns totally different than my daughter, and I cannot expect my son to be at that same level, but I can meet him where he is and support him in that way. And I appreciate the, the effort that he's given, and I want to ensure that I praise him for that. And don't assume finished work will be turned in. How do we guide our students to ensure? Sometimes some of our children complete work at home. We're there. We sit with them. We know they have completed it, and then it doesn't get turned in. What kind of conversations are we having? How are we following up with them to ensure that that is happening? And also guiding them to keep track of their assignments. 
What do you do? We put it on the calendar. Do you have a, a, a study buddy that you can call, that you can talk to, that another parent that can help you and support you with what the assignment was to do at home? Write information that they can look for relationships in the homework, that they can make that connection of what they learned last year or what they learned last week. And they could be like, oh, aha, this sounds like what I did last week or, oh, gosh, now I know how this makes connections. So just having those conversations with the children. Um, thinking those questions of the who, the what, the where, and the why, and the how was this process happening or doing. Now, we want to ensure that we, we guide our children, depending to on the age that they are, that they know how to use a planner. That helps them stay organized, not, not only now, but later in the future. So choosing the right planner. If my child is low, uh, younger, having that calendar that has the bigger boxes that they can write down in. If my child is in the secondary grades, well, they know how to fill in, how to give those details, how to do the due dates. And always being there in conversation of, let me see what your planner looks like. What have we been working on? Oh, gosh, okay, I see you had to do this and you were able to write this. And just ensuring that you're present for the conversations. And, it, and remember, it's always a teamwork. Include your family because not you, not the teacher, not the school can do it by themselves. Next slide, please. So now that we know that there are good habits that we could help our children, let's look at some things that can help with your homework routine. Okay, things to keep in mind. Build a routine together as a family, teamwork. Put schedule in writing. Set a limit on reminders. So you have to do this mass assignment, when does it have to be completed? You have to do this reading project, when does it have to be completed? Get the children started. Okay, let's get started. Let's sit at the table, whatever the, the sign area is, let's do it. Design, um, to get the child started with the, the tools, necessary tools that they need. And then step back. Again, sometimes we're so accustomed to being there for our children and completing from beginning to end. Do this, did you already do that? Did you already do this? Just ensuring that you step back and you watch from afar that they are successful with their tasks and routines. Set a timer, that's important. Okay, we're gonna work from this to this during this time because that will only help them stay focused on what the assignment is. Plan realistically around the school activities. How many of you have sports? How many of you have dance, have drill team, have after school activities, tutoring, okay? How are we managing homework during these other activity times? and always reward the progress. Again, no matter how small or big the achievement may be, reward the progress and for the effort that they have been doing. And the last one, very important, stick with routine. It is so easy for us to just change things one day and then what happens? It's so much harder to get back on routine. So continue with that routine and help supporting your children. Next slide, please. Okay, so as children are working with uh, their homework, just as adults, we're all humans, we get distracted. And so they will too. These are some tips that can help your household move a little bit of off and beat those distractions. Take frequent breaks. You know, it's okay. He's been working on the reading assignment. Okay. After chapter one or mid through chapter one, take a break. Let's take a walk, move around, do some kind of a hand movement, talk out loud. What did you read? You know, change the subject, ask him about his day. Ask him about the next assignment that has to be done or ask about the thing that's happening outside in the neighborhood and then take a drink. Go for a drink and take that break. That will help in focusing with homework. Next slide, please. So another thing that we wanna ensure that we know that there are a lot of meltdowns. How many of you have them? How many of you hear this? Oh, I don't wanna do this. Oh, I can't afford to do this. I can't do this. Okay, so then there are a couple of things that we can do to avoid those meltdowns, build that partnership with teachers, create that notebook that a teacher and the parents can focus on, consider a tutor, an older student, a college student that can help with the support, because if you have noticed, sometimes it's easier for a stranger to help make those connections with their children than sometimes as a parent. You want. Then and join a homework group and enforce those consequences. Next slide, please. Okay, so let's look about managing the, the homework load because those meltdowns sometimes could be because of how much homework they have to do. So let's look at this top uh, row that we have here. We have a couple of questions. Now imagine what the bottom row, A, B, or C. Think about this. What's best for everyone? Is it A, B, or C? What do you say? Next, please. 
Do it as early as possible, correct? Number two, what if I have fun? Uh, I'm sorry, what if I have an intimidated child? Intimidated child. What's your answer? Next slide. Build confidence. We've got to help build that confidence. What if my child is a forgetter? He forgets to do his homework. He forgets to write down. What do we have to do? Create a call list. Very good. These are just a couple of things that you may have children that may be falling under these um, little timelines here that can help and support you. Let's look at some more. The next slide, please. What if my child is overwhelmed? What can we do? A, B, or C? Cut the assignment in half. Number two, what if my child is a daydreamer? What can I do to help my child? Got to change the scene, move them around, talk about something else. Number three, what's best for my elementary grade child? Always keeping positive feedback. Good job, Marlene. Good job, Raylene. Good job, Ingrid. Okay. And any little motion and um, activity that is being done. Couple, three more. The next slide, please. What if my child is a whiner? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, how many times do we hear this at home? What can we do? We, as parents, can sometimes leave the room because we know that maybe they're acting this way because we're present. But if we leave the room, we let them figure out something may change differently. Number two, what if my child is a procrastinator? What can we do? We can beat the timer. You put things on a timer. Let's see. Okay, let's finish this. Let's finish that. Then we move on to the next thing, right? Look at the planner. What has to be done? And number three, what's best for my child in the secondary years? Plan, plan, plan. And it's not too early to begin at the beginning. Plan. This is what it looks like as a family. This is our calendar. This is what we do first, second, and third. What are your assignments? How can we get that completed? Next slide, please. Okay. So how do I, as a parent, help with homework without taking over? How many of you sometimes get so overwhelmed as well? And we're like, okay, just come here, right? But let's look at a couple of things that we may have done then that we could do differently now. Next slide, please. We used to sit beside the child to answer questions and fix their mistakes. How many of you have done that? Because you want your child to get a good grade, right? So what can we do now? We can stay available close by by doing our chores, our cooking, our cleaning, where we can just keep an eye out for them. And we give them that independence. Next slide, please. Okay, next. How many of you hear the nagging, the nagging? And we're there and we're like, oh, we're saying, do your work. Did you already do math? Did you already sit down? Do you have your pencil? Do you have your paper? When are you going to start? Let's start now. You have five. How many of us are continuously doing that kind of nagging? That's what we did before. What can we do now? We can set up a nonsense routine. We can show them, hey, this is what we're going to do. This is the expectation. And this is how we're going to move forward. Next slide, please. Before we used to lecture, why are you waiting to the last moment to do your homework? That doesn't begin or end at any time. We're always going to have, why are you waiting till two nights before? Why are you waiting till the day before to study for a test? What can we begin to do now? We can start teaching them those time management skills. Let's look at your calendar. You have this assignment that's due in two weeks. Let's do this first. Let's do that second and break it down. Next slide, please. Again. When they are there, we start getting sucked into the wine fest and we start, you know, listening and start, oh, yeah, 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 I don't want to do this. What do we do? We're just going to walk away and help and support them to ensure that they're on their own, find that best way to work with things. Next slide, please. Again, we're used to sometimes working with that project until the product is perfect. The coloring is inside the line. The letters are written correctly. You didn't do that right. Let's start all over. Let's do this. Let me help you. We're going to ensure that we allow our children to take the lead. And that's how we are able to help and support our children to ensure that they are there to continue to, to be successful with their homework. So now that we are able to do those kinds of things, we're going to go to the next slide. And we'll be able to see some applications. If you need help with tutoring, free services for homework, for tutoring, want to know what's happening in Dallas ISD, the support that Dallas ISD is doing, you can go to this um, QR code, just take a snap picture of it, and it'll be able to help you 
and see what support is out there. There as well, you'll be able to see a list of maybe some devices, some technology that can help you with um, online planning, that can help you with um, conversations, with practice, the reading in other languages, you're able to see that there, okay? So that tool is there for you. You can take a picture, you can go ahead and um, get to that. So then, because we know that homework's important and just like um, we're helping and supporting our children, Mr. Jim Ron says, nothing is more powerful for your future than being a gatherer of good ideas and information. That's called doing your homework. And that's what you families, parents, caregivers are doing today. You're doing your homework. And so as we continue with our homework with the Office of Family Community Engagement, be on the lookout because we're gonna have some academic parent videos. We're gonna have some academic webinars where we can um, be there and help and support with the academic partnering for student success. So be on the lookout um, in our social media, on our Facebook, on campus flyers, on campus websites. We wanna ensure that we're there to partner and help and support you with the Office of Family Community Engagement. Again, thank you for being here. Apologize for the technology, for the talking fast to ensure that, I'm, that I get on time. And any questions, please feel free to email us um, at family at Have a wonderful Saturday. Take care.